and I gave you, a, this is an explanation, it's not a rigorous proof, but you can turn this idea into, I think, a rigorous proof. Um, um, well, I divide this, this into two cases, I think. Um, first one was when this um, F prime of A, that's where things are happening in here, when this is non-zero, and in that case, that the assumption we are putting in there, n is 1. The first derivative is already non-zero. And then we looked at this Jacobian map and what, ha what is happening around the Jacobian maps. So I'm actually describing a harder case here, n equals 3, for example, and that's the example I um, use and describe in class. So what happened is that f of z is more complicated, but if you just look around z equals a, and that goes to f of a, and the function looks a lot like this one. It's a constant uh, plus, and a constant, that's just a coefficient of z minus a to the nth power. Think about what the simple map is doing, raising to the nth power. If n equals 3, I'm describing what the ma map is doing, you divide this entire the local region of a into three pieces, um, what this third power is doing, you raise the modulus to third power, and what it's doing to the argument is multiplying that argument to, by De Marvel's theorem to the argument, three times the argument. So rotating angle is three times. So that's why I divided entire 2 pi into three different equal region in terms of the angle. So if you have this angle, that's exactly one third of a 2 pi, so if you raise it to a third pi, it's going to rotate, you know, two times and three times going back to itself. That's what that map is doing. So what happened around this first region in here, as you raise the third power, it's going to wrap around all the way to the completely. Okay? That's what this map is doing. What this map C, multiplying by C, is doing, the C is a complex number, right? What is a complex number multiplies to something? It is about, again, to Marvel's theorem, modulus is multiplied, and angle argument is rotated about a certain amount. So if this is the initial side, this, what the C is doing is a dilate a little bit and rotate around. That is all happening in the tiny region around A. So this initial bar here I'm indicating with this closed dot is going to be shifted around it here. And what this map is doing is wrapping from here entire, you know, 2 pi over uh, 3 is increased by 3 times. So it's going to, starting from here, wrap around entire 2 pi. So just, just dealing with it, just this tiny bit in here, you will cover entire neighborhood around f of a. That's what this map is doing. With that explanation, and um, I'm explaining down there, if 0 is here and f of a is there, that's the modulus f of a. And you can always find a, a point a little bit away from that f of a, f z, right? So that this f z is just slightly bigger. Well, in that case, the question is that will there be some neighborhood around a such that this f of z is obtained? This, just one third of the neighborhood, covers completely around the neighborhood. So anything over here, there will be a map because of the surjectivity of the map. So, you know, qualitatively, you can see that existence of number z in that first or third um, of this entire neighborhood will map to somewhere over there, anywhere in the, around the neighborhood. So there will be something bigger, so f of a cannot be maximal if it is an interior of the region. So if you have a something like this, that's the region, and if you happen to be finding that, hey, this f of a, this, this value in here, the function takes a maximum value around the neighborhood, what is the conclusion then? You know the conclusion. If I find one point inside interior region of a complex analytic function, and then you conclude that that is actually the maximal value, then what is your conclusion about the function? You can't have that, right? It must be outside, unless the function is constant. So that's your conclusion. If you find it inside maximal value, then you, com you conclude that the function is actually a constant. So more, more like a Louisville's theorem, right? If the function is bounded, then you know the function is constant. Things like that. Um, this is number seven of homework.